happy to be here once again and uh, sharing this uh, the Eucharistic celebration with you. I want to thank uh, the mission office of the diocese and the diocese, the bishop himself, allowing us to come to his diocese, the diocese of Lansing, uh, to make this appeal on behalf of the Missionary Society of St. Paul. And I want to thank Father Tom, your amiable pastor. He's been, he's been so gracious since I arrived, since more years, Friday, and uh, taking me around your beautiful city, very quiet, a beautiful city. And uh, you have a beautiful church. You uh, see beautiful people too. <laughs> Thank you so very much, and I also want to thank uh, Father Mike. Uh, we've been all together and uh, sharing uh, beautiful times together since I arrived here. Um, you know, the gospel is, it wasn't just a mere declaration that it became a reality in the lives of so many. Uh, that Jesus healed the sick and fed the hungry, fought for the poor, and the oppressed deliver those who are possessed by all kinds of demons and liberated them. His presence was truly good news for so many. Good news. The gospel for so many. And so, of course, desiring to, uh, that this good news continues, he commissioned the twelve apostles. And those twelve small groups took on the world took on the world, the powerful world at the time, and indeed conquered it. And so took this, this, this gospel to all the nations, as it says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, go and teach the nations all I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. They took on this beautiful task and a huge task and indeed conquered the world. And from the apostles we have also men and women uh, dedicated, who have dedicated their lives uh, to the missions at the full steps of the apostles, traveling to the ends of the earth, continuing the mission of spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And they leave family and friends at home and, and travel to the remotest parts of the world uh, to bring this good news to people around the world. And also there are men and women who have committed their resources in making, their, making the missionary work possible. And there was a time Africa was receiving a lot of missionaries uh, and your resources and support made their work very possible and they succeeded. And the fact that we our missionaries coming again back into the Western world to proclaim the good news, to share this good news is, is a testimony of their success. It's a testimony of their, the, the tremendous work they did uh, in Africa, in the churches booming and growing, and in so many ways, we have a lot of vocations. And so it's a testimony to the alien missionaries who came. And uh, your, your support for them really made their work possible and, and they planted the seed of the good news and it's been growing and growing and growing. And that we are coming back even to help in also nurturing the, the faith of the church here uh, is harvesting from the fruit of their level. Yeah? So it's a beautiful thing and, and, and we, we live in a beautiful world. So the, 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 what to give as missionaries who give there are also those who go, go, you know, to these places and continue to plant the Word of God and the lands that are yet to receive it. So, therefore, as members of the church, we all have this great opportunity to be vessels of God's presence and instruments of the good news everywhere. Anytime you give to the missions, you are sowing the seed of the gospel, helping the work, the work of God to continue to spread. In that spirit, the Missionary Society of St. Paul was founded in 1977, and today we are over uh, close, to two, uh, close to 300 missionaries working in 11 African countries. We are in Europe, um, in four countries in Europe. We are here in the United States. Over 50 
priests, how the missionaries of St. Paul work here in the United States in different dioceses across the United States. And we're also in the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas, the Grenada, we're in Canada. Uh, so we kind of spread across uh, the, the continents. Our missionaries around the world still witness those moments when the gospel continues to change lives, and still to transform lives. In our mission in Malawi, uh, one of our missions in Africa, we have over 300 orphans uh, who are victims of HIV and whose also parents died of HIV and they became orphans. We care for them. You know? We're also providing water, fresh water wells. You know? So many villages, and even in my own country, Nigeria, where the desert is approaching in, in the northern part of the country, they don't have water. And we're there, not only providing these resources, uh, fresh water for them to you know, refresh themselves, but also providing the good news, sowing the gospel within these uh, communities. In South Sudan, you know South Sudan, it's a very young country. Uh, as soon as they gained independence, they descended into war. It was such a bad situation, and they had to fight. And so they left behind, you know, street children, child soldiers, and all that. Our missionaries are involved in trying to get those children back and rehabilitate them and, and give them some kind of decency of life and, and help them to uh, move forward in life. We are also providing technical and vocational education to young people in, in my country, in Nigeria, and in Nigeria we also have a tuition-free school. Know, to for the very very poor, you know, can afford any monies for school tuition or school fees or anything. We, as long as we assess you are poor, we bring them in and we give them education, something they couldn't ever dream of or even afford. And we're doing that uh, uh, very well, and this is made possible through the resources, your generosity, and people everywhere. You know, today's gospel is a very beautiful one. We are reading John chapter 6. And the church spread in over three, four weeks. Uh, it's a continuation, today is a continuation of yes, uh, last week. Jesus makes an extraordinary claim. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And if anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that makes you to live forever. You know, it's an incredible statement. And so, that's why the people murmur. How can, and it says, the bread I will give you is my flesh. You know, How can this man give us his flesh? Do it. It's unheard of. This is the first time they were hearing something like this. You know? How can he give us this, his, his flesh to eat? But Jesus insisted on it. His audience were Christians, you know, and, and that he, and he insisted on it, he didn't back, back out and say, okay, that's all right, I'll make it sound okay for you. No, that's to tell you how important that claim is. And uh, for the past 2,000 years, the church has solely existed for that purpose. That's what we say, the Eucharist is the source and summit of, the, of our life as, as a church. Everything flows from it and flows back into it. And, and so, and for, for uh, the missionaries who make the body and blood of Jesus available around the world. And it is food that makes us live forever. We cannot just keep it for ourselves. We have to make it available for the entire world. And wherever we go, we are making Jesus available, giving them this food of eternal life. And that's what we do. Not only providing, helping them materially, but also uh, giving them this food of immortality. What's in the Ignatius called the medicine of immortality. And now the food that we eat and never die. Huh? That's incredible. That is so wonderful and so beautiful that, you know, no matter what happens, we, we cannot lose the Eucharist. It's so precious. And, and so, so good. And so as missionaries, we leave our country and travel to the furthest end of the earth. 
making Jesus present everywhere. And so, as St. Paul tells the young Timothy in his letter to Timothy, Timothy chapter, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, he says, It is, um, it is, the will of God that everyone should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It is the will of God that everyone should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And of course, Jesus himself tells us in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, have it in abundance. This is the, 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 the food that he gives us, the food of himself, is the food of abundance. And so, as your financial help and help us and prayers will help us in no small measure to carry out this divine commission which the Lord Himself has entrusted to all of us who are faithful. And we are called the faithful because we believe we are faithful to the Lord. We are people of faith walking on that on that journey that He has stressed out for us. You know, talking about conversion and making Jesus present in the world. You know, like I shared with the church last uh, yesterday. I said one of the places that need really need the light of the gospel today is the place the land of China. Huh? Uh, we never thought about it. But China is a, a country of 1.4 billion people. Billion. The Catholic population around the world is 1.3 billion. And we have a country, just one country alone, much more, more than the entire country, the population of the Catholic Church in the world, 1.4 billion. Then what is the Christian population there? A mere hundred million. And what is the Catholic population? A mere ten million. You can imagine that. Ten million in out of 1.4 billion people. So it's a time we pray for the conversion of China. That the light of the gospel, this is a huge ripe harvest ready for harvesting. And as the Lord says, you know, it says pray to the Lord of the harvest and they will send laborers into the harvest to, to harvest these souls and that are longing and trusting for the word of God. You know, they may be growing economically and expanding and wonderful, but their souls have been lost. You know, their souls have been lost. This is massive harvest ready to, uh, you know, you know, to be harvested. And so pray for the conversion of China. You know, there was a time we, we prayed for the conversion of Russia. Huh? We were praying for the conversion of Russia, you know, through the pages of Our Lady, you know, through the Fatima children. So pray for con conversion of uh, Russia because of communism spreading at the time. Now it's time to pray for the conversion of China. We want to, the church wants to go in there and reap this harvest so ripe and huge. And so, <clears throat> our own founder, the founder of our congregation, uh, Dominic Cardinal Ekandu uh, heard the command of Jesus and the call of the Second Vatican Council which said it would help greatly if the young churches took part in the universal mission of the church. Even though at the time we were still receiving missionaries in our own country, Nigeria says we have to send missionaries to, we have to mission missionaries to the rest of the church. And that's why, through the encouragement of, of Nigerian bishops, the Missionary Society of St. Paul was founded uh, in, on Mission Sunday of 1977. And so, as you can see, we are a missionary society, just you know, a few more, a few years old. Huh? <laughs> so that's why we need a lot of your financial help, uh, maybe much more than the well-established religious orders. We have other investment and things like that, but we, we need your help. So please join us in our mission work through your second collection today. Whatever amount they give us will be received with much love, with much love and gratitude. And 
We cannot do outdo God in generosity. The work God has given us is urgent. It is urgent. And um, if you read the, uh, this, the letters of St. Paul, you see how urgent this good news is. Going out there, suffering, going through the sea, and you know, battling all kinds of things. Because the souls, the souls are precious to the Lord. So, your donation uh, will help us in the work we do. The little bit we do within the church, the where we are needed. So you can bring in your donation during the week, if not today. Or remember us anywhere, anytime you can. But most of all, pray for us. Pray for us. Your donation and general support for the missionary strikes of all. It probably goes to train for the training of our seminarians. At the moment, we have 100 seminarians in training. And these are the future missionaries who will be sent out uh, to other places. When I was talking with Father uh, the other day, and I was telling him, we as a missionary society, we receive about 4,000 applications every year. Four. Thousand applications for young people who want to join us. But how many do we choose? Just about 25 in number out of 4,000. Because we have limited resources to do all this. And so, and it, it costs only about 3,000 to train a seminarian within a year. Uh, over here in the United States, I know it takes over probably 15, 20,000. And you know what you pay for college, degrees, and all that here. But in Nigeria, it's about 3,000 uh, to train a seminary in one year. And you can just buy a check of that, and that is kind of a seminary. <laughs> <laughs> so, any donation to that, it would be highly, highly uh, appreciated. And so, you can make your check always payable to the parish. With a memo that says missionary, uh, they will get it together, uh, collect it, and send to us uh, the headquarters in Houston. You can also bring your donation to the parish office during the week, and if you're not prepared to do it today, I want to do something more, even much more, for the second collection. As Father announced, our flyers that will give you a few information again about our. Um, our society, as you step out of the church, you just grab one and enlighten yourself more. And thank you so, so very much for being gracious and listening to me. And I hope you understood my accent. <laughs> God bless you all.